So we have the Ptolemaic model, crystal balls, <laughs> and it persisted for 1,500 years. They didn't totally accept it, but they couldn't come up with anything better, so the idea just persisted. It had to be adjusted continuously because they couldn't quite get the position of the planets. And nobody really challenged it until the early 1500s, and along came Nicholas Copernicus. Okay, Copernicus. What did he do? He said, well, wait a minute. We've been adjusting the Ptolemaic model for 1,500 years. Perhaps it's wrong. Maybe that's why we can't get it right, is it's just not right. Okay, so he said, here's a slight adjustment. I'm going to instead put the, earth, uh, the, sorry, the sun in the center, and everything's going to go around the sun. Now, I can kind of account for the motions of the planets, because being that the planets will be differing distances from the sun, they're moving at different speeds, different rates, and therefore will overtake each other. And the overtaking of one planet of the other will result in an illusion that is going backwards, okay? It's this retrograde motion that they couldn't explain in the wandering stars, the planetos. And so Copernicus put the sun in the center, but he didn't abandon everything from the Pythagorean paradigm. He maintained circular orbits, and he um, maintained a, a, a uniformity of motion. So the planets are allowed to go at different rates, but that rate is constant. Uh, it doesn't change as you go around. The Copernican model became known as the heliocentric model, and it got some backlash. Okay, uh, There was an accepted theory that was largely governed by the Roman Catholic Church in Europe that said, no, 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 here's the, here's the plan that the Earth is the center. So Copernicus, we're not going to accept that the sun is the center. But the Copernican model started to gain some ground. And it wasn't long before a major breakthrough occurred through the work of Galileo.